In the last video, we examined this apparatus. This is an apparatus that we use to measure the photocurrent from a metal surface. Photocurrent is just the number of electrons ejected from the surface per second. We can measure the number of electrons ejected from the surface per second only if we are able to get all of the electrons to pass through an ammeter. We can't add any additional electrons in, and we can't lose any of the electrons that are ejected, or else we won't get an accurate current reading. The way that we keep all of the electrons and pass them all through the ammeter is by putting a positive charge on the collecting plate so that the electrons are attracted, then they move through the wire, through the ammeter, to get to the positive terminal of the battery. This is how we measure the photo current. Next, we're going to measure, with a different, different apparatus, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons when they are ejected from the surface. It's almost the exact same. The primary difference is that instead of having the negative terminal connected to the metal surface and the positive to the collecting plate, we're going to put the negative terminal of the, collect, uh, the, negative terminal of the battery to the collecting plate. And here's what that looks like. The collecting plate is now connected to the negative terminal, which means the collecting plate has a net negative charge. The metal plate is connected to the positive terminal, so the metal plate has a net positive charge. You might be wondering, how can an electron, which is negative, be ejected from this positively charged surface? Well, here's the answer. Even though the surface, the metal surface, has a net positive charge, there are still electrons in the surface. They're just outnumbered by positive charges. So there are still electrons in the surface, and those electrons in the surface will get ejected when they absorb a photon that has enough energy. The question, though, is what's going to happen to this electron once it's ejected? After all, electrons have negative charge. Will it make it all the way to the collecting plate? Or will the electron, the negatively charged electron, will it be repelled away from that negative collecting plate? We're going to answer the question by looking at an actual simulation of the photoelectric effect. Here's the first setup. This collecting plate has a slight positive charge can you see the positives right there in red? Let's zoom in. We have positive charges lined up on the collecting plate. There's a net positive charge because it's connected to the positive terminal of the battery by this wire. The ammeter is the yellow box. The ammeter shows a current reading because it's collecting all of the ejected electrons and sending them through the collector, through the ammeter, and then into the battery. So what I've said to you is I'm going to take away the positive charge here and instead put a negative charge. Let's look at what happens. You see that the electrons are ejected from the metal surface. These negative electrons come out even though there's a net positive charge on the surface. And once they're ejected, what happens as they approach the negative plate? They are slowed down. They are slowed down but they still make it through and so we still get a current reading. So I need to take this and I need to make it a little bit lower like right to right to there. Now that it's negative one volt right an even larger negative potential at this plate the electrons slow down even more. Look at what happens when I go to negative 1.2 the electrons stop just barely before entering the plate. They stop the same way that a ball stops when you throw it up into the air. They are sent out with kinetic energy and here they have none. They have stopped altogether. What they have when they reach this negative plate is electrical potential energy. We calculate the electrical potential energy from the battery voltage what we call the stopping voltage, 
It's the value at which they don't go into the plate, the value at which there is no current, because they all turn around. Using that stopping voltage, it wasn't negative 1. Negative 1 wasn't the stopping voltage, because they weren't all stopped. Some got through. The stopping voltage was negative 1.2 volts. Using that value, we can calculate their potential energy at this plate, and then we can determine the maximum kinetic energy that they had when they were ejected. If we take a ball and we throw it up into the air with some kinetic energy from the ground, eventually it reaches the highest point where it stops. When it gets there, the ball doesn't have any kinetic energy because it's stopped. Instead, it has gravitational potential energy. We measure gravitational potential energy from a zero level, and we know in this case that the ball's initial kinetic energy has all been converted into the gravitational potential energy. In the exact same way, we can imagine the metal plate and the collecting plate, like a ground and a highest point. The metal plate is where we send off this electron with the maximum kinetic energy. We take that, that metal plate as the ground. It's the plate at which there is no potential. It's our zero level. The electron is sent off, and right when it reaches the collecting plate, it stops. At this point, it doesn't have any kinetic energy, just like the ball didn't have any. But the electron does have potential energy, electrical potential energy. It's being repelled by this plate. It has stopped. It's about to turn around and go the other way. We know what the potential is at this plate. It's equal to the voltage of the battery. And that voltage, where we stop the electron, is called the stopping voltage or the stopping potential. In the same way that the kinetic energy equaled the gravitational potential energy, in this case, that max kinetic energy, EK or EK max, is equal to the electrical potential energy. And we can calculate the electrical potential energy by multiplying the charge of the electron here times the potential difference between the two plates. So using these formulas, we will see that, in fact, we can calculate the maximum kinetic energy based on how big the voltage was in order to stop the electrons, in order to register zero current on the ammeter. So here are the big ideas. The stopping potential or stopping voltage is the negative potential that we must apply to the collector in order to stop the electrons. At that stopping voltage, the current registered by the ammeter is zero because none of those electrons enter the collector. They're all stopped and turned around. We use that value of the stopping voltage, we measure that value, and we use it along with the charge of an electron to determine the maximum kinetic energy that the electrons had when they were ejected at the very, very start when they left the metal plate.